And so what we found is that uh, we can we can basically measure the, the relative age of organs in, in your body of, let's say, the heart, the liver, the kidney, the brain, simply based on the composition of the blood. During your study, you, you, you use a technology called Sumologic or the Sumologic platform. So can you try to explain? I know that it's very complex and I'm not sure that all our audience will understand it, but what is Sumologic and uh, what is the advantage of uh, such a platform? Yeah, so the, the way you do, if you want to measure thousands of proteins, you need, of course, very sophisticated tools. Um, we, you know, the field had developed methods to measure one protein at a time, but over the past um, 10, 20 years, methods were developed that really can measure these thousands of proteins. One is actually with a, an older technology called mass spectrometry, where you can measure any, any type of molecule really based on the method you develop. But these are um, more advanced or more uh, specialized tools like Somalogic, uh, you mentioned, they basically develop, um, if you, if you think about a protein as, 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 um, uh, sort of a, a three dimensional structure, they produce a, a molecule that can recognize that structure. It's like a lock and a key, and they produce that for thousands of different proteins and um, they, it actually allows you to measure these um, proteins in just a drop of blood. So um, it has really the advantage that you don't need a lot of blood from from a, a, a person, and you you get thousands of different measurements. And why would we want that? We want to um, really understand biology um, in an unbiased way without having a preconceived idea of what we're going to find. And so the more of these proteins we can measure, our body has about 20,000 genes, and from each gene, you can make one of these proteins. And uh, the more of these you can measure, the more you learn about the biology or the disease um, in, in a person. There's another platform uh, from a company called Olink, and they can also measure several thousand, they can now measure 5,000 proteins, and they use a slightly different technology. But it's on, based on the same idea that you have these um, uh, basically tools that can specifically recognize different proteins. And these proteins could be hormones, they could be you know, something like insulin, or you may have heard of interferon or TNF. Um, so all kinds of different building blocks of biology. And the research that you presented on was had a very long follow-up period, a 15-year follow-up period, which is super significant. Um, what were some, um, or can you share some of those main discoveries from this experiment, especially those that are related to aging? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, maybe... To just mention the you know the cohorts that we have, we call these cohorts. So these are um, samples from groups of people um, who volunteer for research. Usually, uh, they come from Alzheimer's research centers at Stanford as well as uh, Washington University, um, and, and and also a very interesting cohort from uh, near Barcelona at Einstein College of Medicine in New York. Um, he studies centenarians and their children, um, and then unrelated uh, the spouses often, and, and then unrelated people also to some extent. Um, and from that study, actually, from, from near is where we had the 15-year follow-up. We didn't have that much follow-up from, from the other studies that we had. So um, as you said, that really provides you the possibility to get a blood sample from somebody um, at time zero, and then 15 years later, you can see, is that person um, still healthy or did they develop a disease and what type of disease did they develop? And so what we found is that 
we can we can basically measure the the relative age of organs in in your body of let's say the heart the liver the kidney the brain simply based on the composition of the blood so when we measure these thousands of proteins we find that some of them come from for example are being produced only in the kidney so if we then measure these proteins they tell us something about the kidney similar to when you go to the doctor the doctor takes some blood and measures let's say insulin they can tell you whether you have diabetes or not um, or if um, you measure a uh, pro prostate antigen whether you have maybe an enlarged prostate or may you have cancer these are all basically measurements that a physician will do in your blood that allows them to tell you whether you're healthy or not and so we use that same idea but we look again at many more proteins that your regular doctor would look at and we look at proteins that are produced they're present in the blood but they're produced in the kidney for example or in the heart in the brain and so if they change in levels they tell us something about the function of that organ um, whether it's function normally but it also tells us something about the age so what we could do uh, with this tool then is we were able to predict or measure basically the biological age of all these major organs in a person so if you gave me your blood i can measure these proteins and i can tell you approximately how old your body as a whole is but more interestingly how old is your heart how old is your brain and what we have discovered not just our lab but the field now is that let's say you're 50 years old it turns out some of your organs are a little bit older not 20 years older but they may be a couple years older and others may be younger and they don't all age completely in synchrony and what the field is proposing and increasingly there is evidence that this is the case and some from our lab from the study now is that if your kidney for example is older you're at higher risk to develop kidney disease or diabetes for example if your heart is older you're like more likely to have a heart attack um, and especially in that 15 year follow-up study we could show first of all without knowing we could say who had a heart attack because their proteins had different levels in the blood but more interestingly we could we could predict who is likely going to have a heart attack not with absolute certainty but um with um, a higher certainty than most other measurements that that we have currently in medicine for okay. example so if you're overweight you have a certain risk to get a heart disease right or if you smoke um, all these are risk factors that everybody probably knows who, who everybody knows and so if we um if we now have higher confidence to know who actually gets the disease the more precise we can make that prediction the better um, we can tailor drugs for example or really convince a person to do something about their health mm -hmm. right if yeah. if you say somebody oh there's a five percent chance that you know you will have a heart attack maybe they take that chance and they don't change their lifestyle but if you tell them if you don't do anything in two years you have a 50 percent chance of a heart attack maybe then they wake up and say okay i'm gonna change my life <laughs>